be making basics. What's going on YouTube beat making basics back again with another dope video if you're new to my channel Please do me a favor and go ahead and subscribe as well as give me a thumbs up on the video If you like the content without further ado, let's jump right in now today We're actually going to be doing another subscriber slash viewer topic and let's go ahead and jump right on into who We're going to be talking about or what we're going to be talking about here. So this one is going to be um, SP sergeant all right or sergeant um, he said, bro, I need to master mixing and mastering 808s in all channels and kicks. Please help when you can. Well, guess what, man? I got you today. So let's go ahead and go over here. And we're going to just talk about a little bit of like one tip that I can give you uh, to help basically get the proper levels on your 808, your kick, your snares and stuff like that. Um like, I remember when I was first getting started with kind of like with mixing my music, like I would try to do too much. And I found more and more and more that, you know, as I learn more and I do more as far as with mixing my music and everything, that actually less is more. So, for instance, um, one tip that I would give you, there's a lot of different things you could do to balance out your kick drum, and your 808 or your kick and your low, uh, your lower sounds here your bases and stuff is just to level it the right way meaning get to you know put the faders up to where it needs to be the right way so let's just do this i have this beat right here right all right and i'm just going to do nothing but leveling i'm going to show you how that kick and that 808 are going to basically hit with the way they need to just with the levels getting the right levels so first things first i'm gonna bring that kick drum up all right just all i did is hold down option and clicked on it and brought it to nominal gain so let's just see how it sounds like that this is the kick drum right here all right bet so that kick drum is punching through super nice next thing i'm gonna do here is um bring in the snare and the clap just so you can get get some reference to like the how the beat's gonna you know be vibing so i'll bring that up as well And if you notice, even if you look kind of like at our faders, this one is just tucked in right up under that kick. Same thing with this clap. I'm just going to tuck it right under it. All right. So you got the kick and the snare and the clap hitting well together. Um, let's just look at now the leveling for the 808. Now, the general rule of thumb here. I would just go ahead and push this fade up, fader up about halfway wherever that kick drum is. Okay, so that kick drum fader is all the way up to nominal gain. I'll push it like start off like halfway up. And then what you could do from there is put, keep on pushing up until it gets to the point where, it, where it's still tucked under the beat, but you can hear it. You know what I mean? So you don't want it to be super low, but you want it to be tucked under that beat. So let's just go ahead and play it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, as you can hear um, in this track, you can still hear that 808, but you can definitely still hear that kick punching through the mix very hard, and that's because the levels are right. Um, a lot of times what people do is they go here and think that this, this uh, 808 has to be at nominal gain, and then at the kick, then they're trying to mix the kick together. And now at nominal gain, like if you had that, that 808 at the same level as the kick, now it's competing not only with the kick, but when I start bringing in the melody and everything else, it's going to be too loud. The 808 is actually just more so something that's supposed to be felt in the mix rather than heard as, as much, if you know what I mean. Like all the fre frequencies on the 808 are in the lower part of the frequency range. So like really, um, you know, everything below 100 hertz. You know what I'm saying? So you can kind of see how everything is lined up there um, for everything to push through just by the leveling of everything. OK, so that's really the tip here is just to level your music the right way. If you come in here trying to, you know, 
um, overdo it on the levels, you're going to have a lot of problems when you start, start adding effects and different things like that. Now, I can add some certain effects to make this thing punch out the 808. I could put like a distortion on it. I could put, you know, uh, a certain compressor on it called R bass or Re Renaissance bass just to make it punch out, right? But overall, the main thing is going to be leveling. Even after I put the distortion on it, the compressors and stuff like that, I still have to get the level right. So once you could get the level right on your on your you know in your mix, that's when everything's gonna change for you. Um, from there, let's just start bringing in other stuff, right? I'll bring in this hi hat. The hi hat should be tucked under everything as well. So now if we start bringing in some of these melody parts, you want to tuck the melody part right on everything else. So basically, as you've seen here, I'm just kind of tucking instruments under each instrument. So like I have this kick started there, then I brought in the snare and a clap, tuck those right under that uh, uh, kick. Then from there, really you, you got the hi-hats and everything, all your percussion, tuck that right under your snare. From there, you want to kind of basically tuck your 808 right under your hi-hats and then your melody right under that. That's kind of like a good rule of thumb. Now, you, you know, it's not gonna be the same for every beat because every beat has different type of vibes and everything, but for the most part, that's, that's what we're doing here. And then you can, if you just listen to the 808 by itself, maybe even with like say this melody, you can still hear that 808 busting through that mix. I want you to see like if you just look at this guy right here you can see that that's where the level is actually on this track um that's where it's hitting at and compared to this one you know you just have some space here if you just look at the meters too you can see that there's a significant amount of space where this meter is not hitting as loud as this one you don't want it to compete Cause this is a thing, once you play this beat, like, you know, in the car or, or, you know, at a club or something like that, or somewhere where there's a like heavy amount of like speakers that it can really get those lows from the 808s, you're gonna see how that's gonna actually punch out in the mix better than having this 808 punch pulled all up super high and super loud, you know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, there's, like I said, there's other things you could do on here. You can add, you know, different effects on here, like this R bass right here. And if you do add an effect, just make sure you adjust the levels of it. You know what I mean? You don't want it to, after you add that effect, it could, you know, end up messing up the beat and how loud it is and everything like that. So I can push that back down some. So you still have the umph factor from this plugin, but then it's not like pushing through the mix where it's messing up your mix. Same thing with like distortion, you know what I mean? Find you a distortion.
And I'm just basically showing you that no matter what you add to that 808 to make it sound a certain way, the leveling is still going to matter. You know what I'm saying? Like if I push this up too loud, the, the, the bass, it might overtake everything else that's in the mix. You see how I still have it low. Or you can just keep the 808 regular, you know what I mean? And just play like right around here. But in any case, man, that's pretty much the video. Just make sure you're leveling it right. Give it, you know, some space where it's not going to be overtaking any of the other instruments in the mix. You want to look at the meters. You want to listen to how it sounds. You want to tuck it under certain other instruments. Make sure it's tucked well under the kick and under the clap, under the hi hats, and even sometimes under the melody, depending on how your beat, you know, sounds or whatever. But those are some tips that you can use to balance out your 808 kick drums, all your low end, and everything like that. Um, thanks for watching the video. Make sure you leave comments. Make sure you subscribe. Also, make sure you go to my site, beatmakingbasics.com. We have a lot of dope courses and sound kits that you can download and have on your computer to watch or use whenever you need. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.